Tuesday, January 15th, we got our first look at Spider-Man Far From Home. Hi, I'm Agent J here, and today we'll be breaking the trailer down. In this movie, P Aunt May discovers that Peter Parker is really Spider-Man. In the comics, Peter doesn't tell May, mainly because of her health and age. In, in the MCU, Peter's civilian life is blending with his superhero life. As part of the trailer, Aunt May is raising money for a homeless shelter. She's introducing Spider-Man. In the comics, there was a period of time where she worked at the Feast Homeless Shelter, so this seems appropriate. Perhaps she's also working in the MCU. Interesting to see how Spider-Man is viewed in a positive way in the MCU. In the comics, he is viewed negatively because of J. Jonah Jameson's editorials. Enters Happy Hogan carrying a giant charity check paid for, paid for by Stark Industries. It is important to note that this is signed by Pepper Potts, and not by Tony Stark, but it's not a hint that Tony is killed in Endgame because Tony put her in charge of this division in a while ago. Peter Parker travels to Europe with his friends for a school trip. This is the first time he's going overseas, not counting the part where he goes in Captain America Civil War. Peter wants this to be a real vacation with his friends, so he doesn't bring a suit. Unfortunately, things do not work out. Hemke Madeira, the deli owner Delmar, is back from Spider-Man Homecoming. His deli was trashed in the first one, but New York Insurance has probably paid it out. He is probably disappointed that he has competition for Aunt May. In the trailer, you can see Avengers Tower being rebuilt or renovated. Options could be that the tower was bought by the Fantastic Four, which would introduce them to the MCU, or it could be bought by Oscorp, the Daily Bugle, or it could be damaged in Avengers Endgame. It is also interesting that on Peter's passport there are no years, which probably means that Sony does not want to spoil when this movie comes out. It is also interesting that Peter's birthday is the same as when Amazing Fantasy XI, August 10th, was released and introduced Spider-Man. Peter Parker has always been something of a science and nerdy kid. He goes to the school where the brightest kids go in New York. Throughout the movie, he wears a Fight X t-shirt. For a brief moment, Peter did not want to take a suit because he wanted to have a normal school trip. In the comics, he had to always ditch his friends and dates to suit up. Of course, it is possible that from Avengers Endgame, he got worn out of fighting and just wanted to be a normal high schooler and take a break. The MCU has never given us a proper Spider-Man origin story. Yet, we have gotten a glimpse of Uncle Ben in the trailer. Peter is using his uncle's old suitcase to travel to Europe. The initials say BFP, which stand for Benjamin Franklin Parker. Who knows? He could be alive. The first stop of the summer vacation is Venice. It is known for being very romantic because of the canals, and it is a very romantic locale. At this point, Peter wants to get closer to MJ, but he has to ditch his friends so he can go fight some crime and suit up. Love is in the air at Spider-Man far, far From Home, and not just to Peter Parker. Ned Lee and Betty Brett are a couple, and soon end up getting married. But sadly, since it's a superhero relationship, their wedding gets spoiled. Peter may have been unimpressed by Happy Hogan's flirting with Aunt May, but he certainly isn't good himself. In this scene, he tries to flirt with MJ but fails, and then MJ flirts with him sarcastically, but then cuts him some slack. MJ is probably being positioned as Spider-Man's love interest. Also, set photos are being shown of her being carried around by web-slinging Spider-Man in some fairly intimate poses. Given she's as sharp as a razor, it is possible that she will find out that Peter is Spider-Man. Zendaya's Michelle, of course, is very different to the comic book version of MJ, a redhead named Mary Jane. Christian Dunst to put a more comic book accurate version in the Sam Raimi trilogy, and Marvel doesn't seem interested in repeating the same characters over and over again. This version of MJ is a sharp, sarcastic teen who seems to be kind of feminist. The school that Peter and his friends go to, Midtown High, does not treat them well on this summer vacation. The hotel that they stay at is very trashed and full of cats. Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury is the main MCU cameo in Spider-Man Far From Home. The trailer reveals that Fury correctly deduces Peter's identity and pays him a visit, an unexpected visit. He tranquilizes Ned with a dart, and in the process, in the process, that would appear to, this would appear to take place during the Venus leg of the trip, possibly after the Hydrant battle 
given Peter doesn't have the suit. What's in your wallet? The game is known to feature a single scene that's supposed to feature absolutely every MCU character to date. Well, almost everyone. According to Fury, he's never met Spider-Man before the events of Spider-Man Far From Home. Given it's safe to assume the wall crawler is part of that absolutely everyone scene, does that mean Nick Fury isn't in it? Set photos leak. Peter and Fury are going on a boat ride, presumably to a HQ in Venice. According to the Captain Marvel prelude comic, Fury has been working out of bases since he re-established S.H.I.E.L.D. He's believed to now be working in a new organization, and they, in which case they might have a Venice HQ. In this scene, you get to see Nick Fury look out of the Shard, one of the most iconic buildings in London. This building... There are a lot of conspiracy theories based around this building hosting espionage agencies that are based in the Shard, so it's amusing to see Nick Fury, MCU super spy, in the building. His classmates are on, the, are on the London tour bus. Spider-Man is out doing superhero business. His friends go on a big red bus and are in the Tower Bridge incident. The new Spider-Man movie means a new spider suit, and in this movie, there have been a couple new modifications in his new suit. The color is the first one. The color on the new suit is black and red. In the last one, it was blue and red. Also, the spider on the suit has been changed of color. The spider on the new suit is white, and on the last one, it was black. And also, the last thing is that he still has his gliding technique in the sides of his arms, so that may come in handy. Four from Home centers on Peter Parker, also known as Spider-Man, defeating four node elementals. This one here looks like Sandman, but is actually Magma. Nick Fury and Maria Hill come face to face with the first elemental. Assuming Fury is working with an organization again, this suggests he and Hill are a pair of field agents who are dispatched to see what is happening here. Trailers are always out of sequence, so it's possible that this is the first time Nick Fury sees one of the elementals because he is so surprised, and that is why he gains trust and help from Spider-Man. In the scene, Tower Bridge appears to be under attack from above, with blasts of lightning, strikes from the sky, and and bursts of fire searing it. The trailer provides glimpses of three powerful elementals representing fire, water, and earth, so it's reasonable to assume there's an air elemental as well. Certainly lightning would be an appropriate power for, for such an elemental, perhaps loosely based on the classic Spider-Man villain, Electro, or more likely, Zyphon, Mistress of the Wind. Created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko in 1965, the comic book version of Molten Man was a scientist who is exposed to a radioactive liquid. He decided to use his power for a life of crime and has been a recurrent threat to Spider-Man ever since. Ironically, in the comics, he's actually the stepbrother of Liz Allen who appeared in the first film. It looks as though the MCU version of Molten Man is a monstrous fire creature, the elemental Hellfire, bent on causing destruction. The Far From Home trailer includes another unexpected shot suggesting he may play a more important role in the plot. Happy's clearly on the Stark jet, so perhaps he's heard what's going on in Europe and come out to help Peter out. So, if so, it's worth nothing that he'll understand what's going on a lot more than Peter does. He's crossed paths with S.H.I.E.L.D. back when Fury was in charge. After all, this, this raises the possibility that at least one of the Spider-Man costumes in Spider-Man Far From Home will be from Stark Industries after all. The Far From Home trailer features a shootout in the restaurant and is frankly the most unexplainable scene in the whole entire trailer. The scene is provided with no context whatsoever and it's not really the kind of establishment Peter would frequent. Is this simply a generic crime that Spider-Man stumbles across at some point in this film? Or is it possible that Peter and MJ, who are dressed up smartly everyone else, everywhere else in the trailer, go to an upmarket establishment and get caught in a gunfight? Whatever the truth may be, it's difficult to place the scene in the broader context of the story. Chaos on Tower Bridge is indestructible, and Peter Parker's classmates are caught up in it. With lightning flaring around them and a sweet touch, Ned and Betty are holding hands even, even, as, they're, even as they flee for their lives. MJ is the only one who looks back. Before Spider-Man gets the red and black suit, Spider-Man looks, so, looks to sport a stealth version of the traditional Spider-Man costume in Far From Home. The dark hues are evocative of spy, spy getup, perfect for the kind of spy work Nick Fury would surely want Spider-Man to do on his behalf. 
and also look and also looks like pretty formidable body armor. It also looks very highly flexible. Set photos have confirmed that Spider-Man wears his stealth suit while he's in praying. Given the costume, it's safe to assume he's on a mission for Nick Fury, but has Nick Fury taken him on his own? Other features the MCU iteration of Hydro Man. In the comics, Morris Bench was a crewman on a cargo, cargo ship. Bench was exposed to a powerful experimental generator while in the sea, and his body was transformed into a form of living, living water. Blaming Spider-Man for his fate, Hydra-Man sought vengeance. He's been a constant thorn in the web slingers, web slingers hide ever since. Spider-Man Far From Home appears to have reinvented Hydra-Man, or Hydron, as one of the four mindless destructive elementals, and under understandably, the creature strikes in Venice. Peter is unable to stand by as the elemental force weeks weakens havoc in Venice and tries to intervene, only to get blasted back by jets of water. The fact that he's out of costume helps to give a sense of the structure of Spider-Man Homecoming. It suggests that Hydra-Man is the first of the elementals Peter encounters and that he initially takes action even though he doesn't have the suit. This may explain how Nick Fury works out Spider-Man's secret identity. He notes a kid with spider-like powers, realizes the wall crawler hasn't been spotted in New York for a few days, and puts two and two together. Spider-Man Far From Home trailer gives a first look at Jake Glenn Hall as Myster Mysterio, a classic Spider-Man foe created by Stan Lee back in 1964. Mysterio was a stuntman and special effects artist who decided he'd never gained the fame he deserved, and so got involved in the world of superheroes and supervillains. The costume is very true indeed to the comics, Notice the pattern and patterning on the bodysuit and the style of the gauntlets. But this is definitely the coolest Mysterio has ever looked. Hey, Agent B, but just what are Mysterio's powers of the MCU? In the comics, the self-styled magician used advanced technology to, to simulate superhuman abilities, and it's possible that that's what he's doing in the trailer as well. At least, at the very least, Mysterio appears to be able to teleport in clouds of green smoke and can project powerful energy blasts of some kind with, sim with a similar green hue. He's also clearly able to ne negate gravity. Yes, a couple of scenes probably hidden that the MCU has kept this idea with arcane symbols flaring in the air that are reminiscent of the effects that Doctor of Doctor Strange spells. Of course, it's always been possible. The maniac saw footage of Doctor Strange from the battle against the Order against the Black Order in Avengers Infinity War and decided to imitate them. The plot of Spider-Man Far From Home appears to be lifted straight from Mysterio's origin story. Back in Amazing Spider-Man 13, in that comic, Mysterio originally presented himself as a hero rather than as a villain. In fact, he went on, on to frame Spider-Man as a bad guy and earned, uh, and earned acclaim as the city's champion when he took down the wall crawler. Unfortunately for Mysterio, he was unable to resist bragging when he crossed paths with Spider-Man again, and Peter got him on tape. In the MCU, it seems like Mysterio is really the one behind these monstrous elemental attacks, and he's staging victories in battle against them in order to win fame. Another important thing is to note is that he is recruited by Nick Fury. Mysterio's aside, design really is a comic book accurate. Right down to his infamous fishbowl helmet in the comics, Mysterio's helmet was inspired by the eyepieces of Spider-Man's mask, but he can see out, but nobody can see in. The MCU version is a little more spectac spectacular, though making the helmet took a little bit more like a crystal, like a crystal ball rather than a fishbowl. It will be in the music. It will be amusing to see how the movie justifies Mysterio's bizarre fashion choice, which has been roundly mocked in every medium he's appeared in to date. The logo for Spider-Man Far From Home is tremendously creative, a spinning globe that transforms into the Spider-Man symbol. It then incorporates itself in the, in the letter O in, the, in home. It's a nice touch and makes a very dyna dynamic sequence. Spider-Man Far From Home adds a new member to the cast. Remy, Remy He in Crazy Rich Asians in as in and as yet undisclosed role. Previous reports call for Sony and Marvel looking to find another male lead for Far From Home. The cast was opening to all ethnics and specifically noted anyone with leading man qualities between the ages of 18 and 24. He, slightly older, he is slightly 
uh, older than his age, age range, but he could that he could fit the bill. If so, then this may well be a major role. There's been some speculation that he could be playing the MCU version of Harry Osborn, but as yet, there's no evidence to confirm this. Mysterio's grandstanding battle against the Elementals seemed to be winning him quite a fan base, with Peter's friends describing their new hero as being like Iron Man and Thor rolled into one. That's definitely the look Mysterio appears as to be aiming for his power set and armor. This may actually be significant. It's worth remembering that the Vulture Gang had been selling advanced tech and their weapons for years before Spider-Man shut them down, and that included both Stark technology and Asgardian weapons. Mysterio could well have been one of those one of the Vulture customers who is now using that technology to a spectacular effect. Well, Peter Parker will be delighted to spend a bit of quality time with MJ. He's a lot enthusiastic about the fact his school bully, Tony, Tony Revelorly. Tony Revelory's Flash Thompson is also long for the school trip. The MCU version of Flash is very different to his original comic book iteration, who is a tough jock who, who delighted in shoving Peter around, but it seems what element has been kept. Flash Thompson is, an, is a Spider-Man fan. The trailer shows an entirely comic book accurate scene in which Flash Thompson, the man Peter dislikes more than anyone else in the world is the only Spider-Man fan. The international Spider-Man Far From Home trailer features three scenes that aren't on the domestic one. The first is a brief scene that shows Peter Parker attempting to check his luggage and he's shocked to find a Spider-Man costume along with the web shooter and the web fluids inside of it. Clearly Aunt May isn't just okay with Peter being Spider-Man. She actually supports his heroism and she wants him to continue being a superhero even on his European vacation. Fortunately for Peter, the customs officer appears to be to, appears to assume he's just a fanboy who likes to cosplay or unaware Spider-Man. Following on from the scene, the international trailer has also shows the kids checking through customs. Ned and Betty go through as a couple, looking particularly sweet together. MJ naturally goes through alone. There's been a lot of speculation that J.B. Smooth could be playing J. Jonah Jameson, but the international trailer pretty much debunks that theory. He's on the boat in Venice, which strongly suggests that Smooth is just one of the teachers accompanying the students on their trip to Europe. That fits with set reports. A special thanks to Agent L and Agent R for a special behind the scenes help. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell down below, that way you don't miss anything. Boom!